One thing I notice about aging is people start to treat you so differently. When I was younger, people would be nicer to me. Like they would go out of their way to talk to me, smile at me, hold doors open. But as I've gotten older, what I'm noticing is that people, they don't do that. It's almost like you become slowly more and more invisible. I feel like the only people that really see me are other middle-aged women. You know, it's like we give each other this knowing look. And I saw a video about how Karens are women who used to have pretty privilege. I can totally see that being a thing because there's this, you get this privilege that people treat you nice and um, just give you extra attention that maybe other people don't receive. And then whenever that starts to slowly fade away and then completely stop, it's like, if you aren't aware of what's happening, you feel like something's wrong with everybody else. What the freak is wrong? Why is everybody so rude and everybody so dismissive? Why isn't everybody bending over backwards for me? Well, that's because we were given privilege just based on something as shallow as the way we look. And so we thought that our, that was the world, like how the world was, but it's not. A lot of people don't live in a reality that is like that. So I'm not complaining. It's just an adjustment um, to live in this new reality. It also clears out the people who aren't here for the right reasons. So that is a positive thing. It really only brings more genuine and real relationships in. So that's something, but it is an adjustment. So I am 43 years old. I am still single. No ring on my finger. No baby in my belly. No husband to annoy me. I have had some long-term relationships, but here I am. Still single. Still looking. I've tried dating apps, but no. So, given the time crunch that I am 43 and I would like to have a baby, and well, baby making time is quickly coming to an end, I decided to reach out to a matchmaker. I thought, why not try Twakify? Do you guys know how much Twakify charges? They told me they could match me with five guys, five guys for $10,000. Let that sit for a second. Five guys, $10,000. Now I'm not a mathematician, but I think that's about $2,000 per guy. Do any of you think a single man is worth $2,000? Considering he's probably going to be a fucking dud. <laughs> help me. Help me. Stop me from making the biggest mistake of my life. And instead, tell me what I can do to get a baby in my belly, a ring on my finger, and a husband at my side within the next year. What can I do? Someone, anybody, what do you got before I drop $10,000 on five guys? <laughs> Help. Single girls living alone. Please tell me I'm not the only person who's like this. Please, please, please. So I have been living completely alone and totally unsupervised for five and a half years now. I'm not quite sure why, but the longer that I live alone, the less I am able to adult. It's like I'm regressing back to a toddler whose parents have gone out and left her alone. I mean, admittedly, haven't started drawing on the fucking walls yet, but I'm not quite sure that I'm far off. So I used to be a wife. I used to like run a house and stuff. And I used to cook every single day of the week, like from scratch. Started living on my own and suddenly I just couldn't be asked. It just seemed like a massive waste of time to spend like an hour in the kitchen creating something for me to eat. So I slipped into this really bad habit of just eating bread, cheese and salami on repeat every night of the week or ordering a takeout. This morning I was in my freezer and I came across some chicken. And I thought, come on Michelle, I gave myself a bit of a pep talk. You know, we can do this tonight. We can cook. Oh, oh my God. 
what the fuck was I thinking? So my ex-husband, his parents were Indian and he used to cook really good Indian food and he used to cook a mean biryani. Not quite sure why, but when I looked at this chicken, what I saw was chicken biryani. I thought, you know, chicken, rice, how fucking hard can it be? It turns out that I had no idea what I was doing. Um, obviously didn't follow a recipe. I just came into the kitchen, couldn't even be asked to chop an onion to put it in. I just put chicken and rice in a pan and decided to go in with so I found this in my cupboard, whacked in half a jar of curry paste. Oh my God, my ex-mother-in-law would literally destroy me for even having that in my house. Um, a tin of coconut milk, which I couldn't even open the right way up. Whacked it all in the pan, stuck it in the oven. You know, I keep watching all of these people on TikTok. They just like throw stuff in air fryers and slow cookers, come back, ta-da! Admittedly, <clears throat> I'm way behind the times with that shit, so I don't know either, but I thought, you know what, I've got an oven. So I whacked it all in the oven, went back to my desk, completely forgot about it. This, this is what I created. I'm um, really, please do not follow this recipe. There you go. That is what I created. Oh my God. I think the Le Creuset is fucked, darling. Seriously. You'll notice I've actually eaten some of it because while well, I'm starving and there's a cost of living crisis and we can't be throwing perfectly good chicken away. Um, it is edible. <coughs> Gonna be honest and say, I do not recommend it. Do not try this recipe at home. Um, under any circumstances. Actually, you know, I just had a massive, massive flashback to when I was together with my ex, ex-boyfriend. I told him I could cook. I told him I could cook. And then um, I cooked for him. Yeah, we didn't actually stay together very long after that. I just thought it was, you know, personality clash, but I'm actually starting to have second thoughts. Oh my God, seriously. Oh God, no. This is why I'm single, isn't it? I mean, apart from the fact that I don't like going on dates, but I think, you know, I cook for them and they're just suddenly like, wow, wow, no way. The next motherfucker that wants my heart, he's gonna have to suck it out of my coochie. This is a video for my witchy peeps over 40 who are trying to date in the cesspool that is the current state of dating. Uh, so I live in Florida. I don't know where all you, our guys are all from, but I, I, I am originally from Boston, so... I am not used to the way people behave anymore. I used to just be able to talk to someone. Hi, how are you? Talk about normal things. Now, like, well, I don't want to waste your time and I don't want you to waste mine. What, what time are we wasting here? Are you, we not here for this thing? Like, talk to me. What do you, if there's a hard limit, I guaranteed it's going to come out within the first 10 minutes. I know that because people just can't even keep their lid on. But, what happened to when you send somebody a message or you call them, they answer, they return the call. They, people can't even be bothered with that. You know, and I guess what I'm saying is with the lack of respect all around that people have for each other at this point, at least what I'm experiencing, I am not willing to go back out into that dating pool. It's going to take a miracle from God himself to make this happen for me because not willing to put up with it. I'm not willing to sit across from somebody who thinks they have the right to know intimate details of my life or my bikini line within the first five minutes. And yeah, that happens. Um, I am not in the mood for people who want to ask me about all the things I'm looking for, m imitate all those things. And then in about three months, here comes everything. It just, this is who I really am. I'm not in the mood for those games. I'm also not in the mood to sit there and Try to meet all of your checkoff needs on your list of whatever bullshit you've decided the person has to measure up to your stiff. I don't know where the hell all this came from. It used to just be you could just know people, get to know people. And if anyone actually took the time to get to know me, they would know that none of this stuff is important to me. I care more that if I call you that you return that call than I do about what you do for a living how you grew up, where you grew up, if your parents are married. or not. There's so many things I really just don't care about. You know what I care about? Are you willing to be a good partner? Are you willing to be the guy that comes out when I'm stranded on the side of the road and I call you because something has happened and I'm scared and alone and it's dark out? And I need that. I'm sorry. I need that. I'm not a weak woman. I don't have any of that. But you know what? There are things that I really enjoy about having masculine energy in my life that are missing and they're still missing with the people that are stepping forward to try to be that masculine energy in my life i just really don't know what to do about it so i'm open to ideas